Hey guys, welcome to Different Church's online service. Whether you're watching with us on YouTube or listening to us on a podcast, we are so thankful that you decided to join us. My name is Catherine and I'm so excited to be here with you all today. And I have a couple of ways to get you connected. If you're looking for more information about our church, like how to be a part or how to give, you can visit us online at dfrnt.church. If you're like me and you spend a ton of time on social media, head over to whatever platform you use most and give us a follow. This is one of the best ways to stay connected. We are in our series, Weird. People have made the Holy Spirit weird and kind of hard to talk about. So in this series, we're gonna learn how to get more familiar with who he is and what he does. And to go along with the series, we are selling journals. This year is all about growing, so we are gonna write down everything that God is speaking to us. These are just $15, so if you would like to purchase one, you can Venmo us at Different Church and put your address in the memo line. All right, enough for me, let's jump into the message. Stop. I had to get it out of my, listen, I've been watching too much TikTok. I had to get out of my system. I love y'all so much. TikTok, don't cancel me. Different church, how are we? Are we good this morning? Everybody on, listen, everybody online, I have no idea where you're watching from, who you're watching with, how you got here, man. I have no idea, man. I just want to say thank you so much. We're in our series, listen, we're in our series called Weird. And can I be honest with you? God kind of switched it up on me uh, like Thursday. I wish he'd have told me a little sooner, but he told me on Thursday and we're going to get it popping, Okay. But hey, can we hop like right in the Word? Can we read a lot of the Word this morning? I know sometimes like we like one verse and we pull it out, but can we get a lot of, a, a, a lot of the Word real quick? And I know you're, you, someone's already like, Tyler, you're already preaching. I like the funny stuff. I like to do this. I think whenever we read the Word, we don't understand, like we read it the wrong way. And here's what I mean. Look at what it says, Proverbs 3, verse 5. Look at what this says. You probably heard it a million times. Watch. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. So there's two things I get to do. I get to trust or I get to depend on, I get to trust in God or trust in myself. Verse six, seek seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Okay, without, listen, without trust, without faith, there's really nothing. It's gonna be really hard to read this word. Can I be, like, can I keep it real? Can I keep it a buck with you? We do not read the Bible with our mind because we'll be critical when we read it. We can't read the Bible with our heart because we'll get emotional when we read it. We have to read the word through our spirit so we become spiritual when we read it. Because God doesn't speak to your mind because if he, blew, if he spoke to your mind, he'd blow your mind. He doesn't speak to your heart because if he spoke to your heart, he'd break your heart. That's why he speaks to your spirit and allows for your mind and your heart to catch up. But we'll read the Bible and we'll go, I don't see what this Bible says. Okay, are you going to depend on what you're reading and what you're seeing? Or is there faith attached? And without, listen, you might as well leave. Listen, if you're watching online, you're listening to the podcast, whatever, you might as well leave if you're not going to read this word through the lens of faith and trust. Because without trust, hear me, without trust, you can't build a relationship. It doesn't matter. And a lot of times when you bring old trauma into new relationships, you can't build new trust with the new person. Therefore, you're always blaming the new person for the old hurt. And a lot of us, when we read the word, people have been unfaithful to us. So we think God's going to be unfaithful to us. That's a lie. That's a lie. And so as we walk through this this message this series talking about the holy spirit do i have faith do i trust do i have faith that listen and we said it a couple weeks ago i can't remember when it was but and and it should step on your toes if it doesn't then you may not know listen believing in god is one thing that's easy trusting god's different because if i trust what his word says i do everything the word says just say you don't trust him it's okay like you can believe him and not trust him 
Because your wallet would look a little different. Okay, I'm going to walk off. I'm going to walk off right here. This is it. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I read the word and I did what it said, I wouldn't do what I did on Friday night. I wouldn't do this. But we have to build, listen, we have to build trust. Trust. Before we can build anything else, before I can understand anything else, I have to understand, do I trust the Lord with all my heart? When I read this, I may not see it, but do I trust? Do I trust him? And that's really hard. And that takes years. Listen, that takes years. And it's okay. It's okay. It takes years. But eventually you get to a part where I don't need to see. I don't need to see. God's been too good. I don't need to see. It was my wife's 30th birthday, and, and we do something on, our, on, on birthdays. We don't have parties. We have yes days, okay? And that's where everyone in the house has to say yes to you no matter what. And my wife, she had been talking about getting another tattoo and all that stuff, and I had this idea. Maybe it was a stupid idea. I don't know. I had this idea. I said, Ryan, I'm going to say yes to your tattoo, but you have to say yes to what you're getting tattooed by me. I said, you're not going to know what, I'm, we're going to blindfold you. Just trust me. We're going to blindfold you and you won't see the tattoo until it's done. And she was, listen, she was hesitant, very hesitant because it's me. But then she said, you know what, Tyler? Okay, we'll do it. She didn't know what it was, but she trusted who I was. When you begin to walk in your spiritual walk, you won't see a lot of things God's doing, but you keep walking, not because you can see what he's doing or what it will look like, but because I trust who I'm walking with. My wife got the tattoo, not because she knew what it was. She trusted who I was in giving it. And many of us, we stop trusting God because we don't see what God's doing. He says, don't worry about the what, worry about the who. Worry about me. Worry about me, but we, and, and, and here's where the devil gets you. Listen, here's where the devil gets you. Every single time, he'll use, he'll use people. Every single time, he'll use people. And he'll rob you with people. They've been untrustworthy. They've been ungood. The church hurts you. This happened, this happened. And he'll use them. And you'll really begin to form a whole identity on what someone else did and not who God is. And we don't, listen, and, 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 and we don't do that with anything else. Isn't it crazy how only spirituality, like we give up immediately, anything else we're like committed. But for some reason in my spiritual walk, I'm done immediately. Somebody talk bad about me, I'm done. One bad comment, I'm done. You don't do that with nothing else. If you saw me downtown and there's a karaoke night happening and you hear me down the road, you walk up and you hear me singing, when you left, I lost a part of me. It's still so hard to believe. Come back, baby. Please don't. We belong together. The moment, listen, the moment you heard that, you, listen, the moment you heard that, you would not DM Mariah Carey and say, we're done. The moment you heard me singing Mariah's version, you wouldn't stop listening to Mariah because I did it bad. I sang it off key. She didn't sing it off key. And a lot of times in our spiritual walk, a Christian will do something Christ never did and you'll cancel Christ because of the Christian. You'll cancel them because of, you hated the remix, not the original. But you'll get rid of the original because just because someone else was unfaithful doesn't mean God was unfaithful. Just because someone else wasn't good doesn't mean God stopped being good. But you'll really cancel Christ because of Christians. But can I, listen, can I step real quick? Because that was the fun part. Can I step on, can I, can I step real quick? A lot of us just want, uh, oh, this is going to hurt. I'm sorry, online, in-house, I'm sorry. A lot of us just want a reason to be disobedient. And you'll use someone else's disobedience to co-sign your disobedience. That pastor did that with that money there. I'm never being generous again. Just say you didn't want to be generous. Stop blaming, stop blaming someone else's disobedience. You just wanted to go to the club. Now you just feel like you have a reason to go to the club. You just wanted to drink. Now you feel like you have a reason to. You just wanted to, you, you will use someone else's disobedience and go, there's my, there's my door I'm running through. Just say you didn't like everything God had for you. Don't blame the pastor. Don't blame the herd. Don't, just say, I wanted to be disobedient. I wanted to live for the world. Just say it. It's cool. At least be honest. I told you I'm sorry. 
But we're in a series called Weird. Where when I, re- when I open this word and I read it and it talks about who the Holy Spirit is, what the Holy Spirit does, I have to go whether I understand, don't understand, like it, don't like it. I have to look and go, this is what the word says. My spirit understands even if my mind or heart doesn't. And I have to be, oh, listen, I have to be okay being in the dark in some areas. Because in the dark, that's when you're developed. We know that. You, you've seen those old school pictures where they put them in the dark, they put them in the water, and they let them sit and they got to be developed. In the dark, we're developed. So don't get mad at the dark. It's doing something in you. Those hard times, they did something for you, didn't they? But as we read, if you have a Bible, we, can we read a lot? Listen, oh, we've already been one place. Can we be in another place? Can we go to Ezekiel? Ooh, old, old Testament, Tyler. Whoa, slow down, Old Testament. Ezekiel 47, verse 1. As I was kind of talking to God this, this week and we've had, a, we've had a clip over the last month like going crazy, viral, like 50 million people have been watching it. I keep getting sent like, hey, this place shared it, this place shared it. The, it, was just a, it was just something I said in a message and it got clipped and sent out. But God kind of laid on my heart to grow, to build on what people really kind of one here, because a lot of times when we when somebody preaches, when somebody reads the Bible, it it sounds good and I like it and I believe it, but it doesn't really apply. Like it's, I'm having a hard time understanding. Like I'm not sacrificing goats, dog. Like I don't know. And the clip, all I said was, when you get into deep waters, not everyone can swim. That was it. That was it. Though 50 million people sharing it, li- li- liking it, whatever, commenting, whatever. And I said, I don't know that we understand what going deep really means. And there's a passage all about going deep in the spirit of God in Ezekiel 47. So I had something written in 1 Corinthians 13. It's not the wedding chapter. It's the spiritual gifts chapter. But we make it the way. I had it. Listen, it's written down at the house. I'm ready. But God said, not today. So if you have a Bible, we turn to Ezekiel 47 verse 1. Some of y'all haven't ever read the book of Ezekiel at all then you wonder why I have trouble going deep. I have trouble getting deep. But I think a lot of us crave it. We just don't know how to get there. Verse one, we're gonna read like nine verses. You ready? Online, you ready? Let's get it. In my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing. I could see the spirit of God flowing out through the south side of the east gateway. Verse 3. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet. And then he led me across. This is highlighted in my Bible. The water was up to my ankles. But then he measured another 1,750 feet and he led me across again. This time, the water was up to my what? Knees. After another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. Then he measured another 1,750 feet and the river was too, watch this. There was never not more access to water. However far he wanted to go, there was more. If you're taking notes... You can write down, there is more as the title. Then he measured another 1,750 feet and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. Verse six, he asked me, have you been watching son of man? Then he led me back along the riverbank. Now we're back on shore. When I returned, I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. Why do I need access to more of the Holy Spirit? Why do I need more access to the Spirit of God? It says it right here. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea for its waters will become fresh. Look at this. And this is where we're ending. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. I find life when I find the Spirit of God. 
I find blessing when I find the spirit of God. But a lot of us, we're damp, we're not deep. A lot of us, we've mistaken dampness with depth. I think I'm deeper than I really am. I've confused damp with deep. My social media looks holy, holier than I really am. My profile picture on Facebook, we look happier than we really are. I'm damp, I'm not deep. And we cannot confuse the two. And many of us, well, let's go, listen, 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 listen. Let's go back because I think it shows some things that we have to be very careful of. We're going to start in verse 3 because some of us are on the surface. We're on the shore. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet. He led me across. And what was the first thing? What's the first thing that happens? The water came up to my ankles. This is, this is comfortable depth. This is, I don't got to commit to nothing, depth. All I got to do is take my shoes off, depth. There's no commitment. The shallow winds, the shallow winds fun. I don't got to take nothing off. I don't got to do anything. I like the shallow wind. You know, what the, you know what this looks like for us? This looks like I have a cross tattoo. I've got like John 3.16 in my bio. I post like he is risen on Easter. And that's about, like, I like where I'm at. Why? Because I'm closer to the surface than I am to the sea. I can get to the surface quicker than I can back to the ocean. So let me just stay right here in my comfort. And can I tell you something real quick? Online, as you begin to walk, and, and you see, it goes ankle, knee, waist, swimming. All of us are somewhere. You just got to figure out where you are. And some of us online, you may be like, bro, I'm not even ankle, bro. I got to get a cross tattoo. Actually, I'm tripping. I need some. I need something. I got to get something. The shallow wind is always more crowded than the deep end. The de you, you ever been to a pool? There will be about 40 people in the shallow wind. About three people playing in the deep end. Why? Because they, they wore their nice clothes. I got somewhere to be after this. I got somewhere to go. I just did my hair. I took a shower. I'm not trying to do this. I'm not trying. The shallow end requires no commitment. The shallow end, just listen, just like shallow spirituality requires no commitment. I can do whatever I want. It doesn't change how I talk, how I act, how I do anything. But the dangerous thing is you'll go where the crowd is and not where Christ is. And then you'll wonder why you're hurting. Then, you're wonder, then you wonder why you're struggling. You've been where the crowd was, not where Christ was. The club is always more crowded than church. The bar will always be more crowded than the Bible study. But I don't follow the crowd. I follow Christ because the crowd will lead me to comfort. Christ leads me to conviction. And comfort doesn't grow me, conviction does. But you'll confuse occupancy. How many people are here? That's probably where God is. How many people were with Jesus when he died on the cross? There were probably two Marys and the rest enemies. That's it. Your conviction will lead you to lonely places. And here's what we'll do. As Christians, listen, you may be a little bit further in. You'll walk back. You'll walk back where everyone else is. Many of us do so we make them feel comfortable. I, want, I don't want you to feel out of place. So listen, I'll get out of my place so you have a place. Jesus never, listen, 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 listen. And don't get the, listen, online, in-house, I know somebody's going to clip this. I am not talking about evangelism when I talk about spirit-led relationships. But we should not be dating the person we're evangelizing to. I should not really spend all of my time around people that aren't equally yoked with me. So we're talking about, listen, I'm talking about people. Now, Jesus went back for the woman at the well. Jesus turned around for Lazarus to raise him. He went back. He never went back for the disciples. He kept moving and allowed the disciples to get deeper. He didn't get more shallow. And we'll think, let me get more shallow so you don't feel uncomfortable being shallow. And then now you're stuck in the shallow end. 
And the Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit, if you want to know, is this a spirit-filled relationship? Are we going deeper together? It will always cause you to go deeper. He always will. He always has. And this makes, this is a, this is a lonely message. Hear me. Online in house, I had something way more fun. Hear me. I had stuff way more fun. I don't think we understand the cost of going deeper in our walk with Christ. And then we get mad that we're not getting deep. We just didn't understand the cost. Listen, we just didn't understand the cost. We didn't understand what it took. We, didn't understand, we, we don't understand what it takes. And then we'll get mad at God and go, why? The preacher lied to you when he said, come to the cross, everything's good. No, when you come to the cross, everything dies. I'm lonely at the cross. My friends aren't at the cross. Half of my family's not at the cross, but Jesus is at the cross. But I want spirit-led relationships, but I want to leave the cross to get them. He said, no, if you get to the cross, they'll find you. And that's the dangerous part of the, the shallow end. The shallow end attracts shallow people. You're getting mad because you're not attracting somebody with depth. You're mad that you're not attracting somebody that can go deep spiritually, but you're where they are. You'd be surprised if you'll just go deeper, how they'll leave and you'll find somebody in that end of the pool. But you want to stay in the shallow wind and attract deep people. The spirit goes, that doesn't happen, sis. Hey, bro, that, that doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. It was never designed to happen. But you're waiting in the shallow wind, mad that everyone's shallow. Maybe you're shallow. You've confused damp with depth. So what does it say? The water was up to my ankles, measured off another 1,750 feet, and led me across again. This time, watch this. This time, the water was up to my knees. I think this is the most dangerous place you can be in in your walk with God. You're just wet enough to pass off as a Christian. But from the top up, anyone that looks at you, you don't look no different. Don't nobody see any trace of the Holy Spirit, but you show up and sing the choruses on Sunday. This looks like a church member. I'm just, listen, I'm just damp enough. My knees are in here, I'm saved. But can't nobody see nothing from the top up? How you talk, what you do, where you go out at, how much you drink. Nobody can tell any difference. But I'm damp. Yeah, you're damp, you're not deep. And there's a difference. And you're getting mad because you feel like you're pressing in, you're pressing in, pressing in. You haven't fully went in. You haven't. Getting deep with Jesus is not getting deep in the spirit of God. It's not a moment. It is a every single day. I take, it says 1,750 feet. That's a lot of steps to get to the next depth. The water, listen, the water doesn't just rise. You sink. You get deeper. The water doesn't get higher. There are steps. There are 1,750 steps I got to take to get waist deep to begin to swim. To begin to swim. Can I grab some stuff real quick? I got some stuff online. I'm sorry. Let me, let me, get, my, let me get my stuff out. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Y'all better stop. You know how many people come to me and they go, Tyler, I'm ready to take my next steps with Jesus. I'm ready to go deep. I'm ready to go deep. And then I say, okay, cool. You're ready to dive into the deep end. They say, yeah, but I got this ungodly relationship. I'm not going to hold on to. And I tell them, I'm like, that's a cert, that, that's something from the surface. You can't dive with something from the surface. They said, but I'm ready to go deep. I got this addiction, but I'm ready to go deep. I'm not going to give it up. I'm ready to go deep. And Tyler, listen, and don't, oh, do not, do not touch nothing when it comes to my money, when it comes to my time, my Friday nights, nothing. Don't touch them. And now you've got all this stuff from the surface that can't, that inhibits you from going deep. But then you'll get mad at God because you're not getting deep. He's like, you're holding on to too many things that bring you back up. You don't know how to get deep. Not be, listen, not because you don't read the word, not because you don't go to church. You're holding on to things that make you float. You're holding, oh, can I put these on real quick? 
These are just cool, man. These are just cool. This is how some of us look like, don't we? We come to church and say, ready to go deep, God? God, I'm ready to dive in the deep end. I want everything you have for me, God. Don't look at my DMs, God. Don't check my search history, God. Don't check none of it, God. But hey, I want everything you have for me. I want everything you have for me. I'm ready to dive in. What if I invited, what if you invited me out to go scuba diving? Someone paid for you to go scuba diving. And you said, Tyler, you want to come with me? I said, yeah. And I showed up to the, to, to the boat and I look like this. You'd say, you're not ready. To, do you even know how to swim? What would you do? You'd have to go back to the shore with me and hang out all day. Some of y'all are laughing. Some of y'all are dating this dude. Some of y'all are dating this girl. Some of y'all's group chat looks like this. Some of y'all are married to this person. Every single time you can try to go to church, they say, come to church. Ah, it's too early. Every single time you say, I don't want to go to the club. Ah, come on, just one time. Every time you hop in the group chat, hey, is everybody good? Anyone need someone to pray for me or for me to pray for them? They start making fun of you. Listen, you can't go deep surrounded by shallow people. And because the devil can't keep you from going where God's called you to go, he'll get you around shallow people that will make you uncomfortable going where God's called you to go. Y'all laughing at me like I didn't have a plan. Come on now. (laughs) I do this. (laughs) Crazy. But that, that we really think we're getting deep, don't we? We really think we'll go deep. As long as no one sees the stuff we do on the surface. As long as nobody sees what I really do behind closed doors. As long as no one sees how I talk. No one sees how I act. No one sees what I do. And we have to, listen, we have to be so careful. A lot of times you don't even know who you're tied to that can't get you where God's called you to go. And that's why every single relationship you have, Holy Spirit, is this from you. And you know how you'll know if this relationship's from God? I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about your group chat. I'm talking about, fa- listen, family. Are they pushing you closer to the deep end? Or every single time you try to do, every single time you try to say something, every single time you try to move forward, every single time you try to do something, are you, you're still doing that Christian thing? You're still doing the church thing? Come on, one time, listen, one time. Okay, I know where you're at in the deep end. I, I know you're on the shallow end, that's cool. I'm going to keep moving, though. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving, and I don't think enough Christians have enough swagger about themselves to stand for what they really stand for. Listen, and that's one of the cool things I love about, like, my, my ministry is not just preaching. It's not just, bro, I want people to be able to really stand up and go, bro, I don't mess with that stuff. I'm not judging you. I just know where God's taking me and not feel weird that I'm standing on something. I've been standing on this. I've been standing on who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, what he called me to do. But too many Christians don't walk with the swagger that we've been called by Jesus that we'll follow every time someone else calls us. You can call me all day long. If it's not to grow my spirit, man, I'm not about it. I promise I'm not about it. Not because I don't like you. I'm just going deep. There are enough people in the shallow one that'll go to the club with you. There's enough people that'll go out with you. There's enough people that will drink with you. There's enough people that will cuss with you. I don't do it because I'm, getting, I'm going deeper. That's it. That's it. Somebody asked me, I'm going deeper. I'm sorry. And there's so many people, man, you're, you're, you're pulled, you're pulled. Let's go back to, listen, let's go back to the word because it keeps going. The more, there's so much access to who the Holy Spirit is and what he does in your life. This time... The water was up to my knees. After another 1,750 feet, watch this. And this is where you really start grinding. Jordan, if you want to complain, thank you. It was up to my waist. I'm halfway there. I'm, ha- I'm, I'm listen, as the spirit has as much as, of me as the earth does. This is when you really start beginning to move. You're growing. You're praying spirituality is not leaving your house on Sunday to go to church. It's bringing what you learned at church to your house on Monday. 
And that's when you begin. This is whenever I'm going, I am getting deeper in my walk with God. It's not an event. This is a lifestyle. It's not an event. This is not an aesthetic. This is who I am. And this is when you begin. Listen, why does being waist deep change everything? It changes how you walk. When you're waist deep in some water, you move slower, don't you? You don't have as much control, do you? You don't walk the same, do you? You don't do the same things, do you? It changes everything that you do when you begin to get waist deep. And why do people, ADHD, there's a movie back in the day, I used to watch all the time called Waist Deep. Don't watch it, it's bad. But if I didn't say it, it was just going to keep going on in my head. When you begin to really move, when you begin to really walk in who the spirit is, it will change everything, 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 everything. I promise, I promise, I promise. That mug came in hot. You know why a lot of people leave waist deep though? This is when people begin to talk about you. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you guys know this is the moment you begin to get questioned for what you're doing. When you're up to your knees, you're close enough to the shore that people think you're with them. When you get waist deep, what's that? You're a mile away. You're a mile away from the shore. This is when people begin to say, oh, she, she's just that church girl now. Bro, he's just overly spiritual. Bro, all he does is talks about, yes. Yes. And I will again. And I will again. And I will again. And I will again. But this is where, this is the moment. Not you'll run to the shore, but the shore will try to pull you to it. Because you're revealing something to them that they're not doing. And it's so, listen, it is so dangerous. The enemy, the devil uses people all the time to make them feel comfortable, you'll go back. I am not trying to make you comfortable. Your marriage is not about, your marriage is not about your spouse's comfort. It is about Christ in your relationship, period. And I think we've, I didn't know if I was going to say this actually, but I'm going to just go ahead and say it. And and for married people online in house, receive it, don't receive it, cancel me, whatever. That's cool. We've made marriage an idol. I think when I have a happy marriage, I'm walking in Christ. That's not true. I can give my wife everything, but not sacrifice anything for Christ. My wife needs me to be the best Christ follower I can be because when I get that, I'll love her how she deserves to be loved. But I'll go, oh, my spouse is uncomfortable. That must be a sign from God. If your spouse is uncomfortable doing the church thing, that's not, you serve Christ before you serve your spouse. And we'll get this mixed up that my religion is attached to my marriage. It's not. That's why Paul says, I'd rather you be single so you don't got to deal with it. But I've attached as long as my spouse is comfortable. No, 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 no. Because you can keep them. What does, I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians 7. It says, if, if believing wife, believing husband, if you're married to somebody that's not seeking, that's not going deeper, keep going deeper. And maybe you're the source of their salvation. Don't stop because then they won't see. Keep moving towards the cross and maybe they'll see, but you'll whittle yourself down because I've got to serve. I serve Christ before I serve my husband or my my husband or my wife. Every single time. And I think that the church, especially on, on our side, we treat marriage as the idol. This proves if my, if we go on vacation once a year and we take cute pics, I'm killing it. No. Am I sacrificing things for the cause of Christ? Do I, do I lay my hands and pray for my wife whether she believes or doesn't believe? Do I read the word with my wife? Do I hold my wife to higher convictions? Do we hold ourselves to higher standards? I'm not trying to be comfortable in my marriage. I'm trying to be like Christ in my marriage. And that's sacrificing. Like I said, I didn't know if I was going to do that. When you're waist deep, this is when even, listen, and you can be married to somebody 
that goes, ah, what are you doing? This isn't no fun. You had best friends back in the day. Why are you following the spirit? Like, why do you go to church like that? If you knew, this is where I'm at. I'm waist deep. I'm waist deep every single time. After another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. Then he measured, we're not done. We're not done. As far as you can go, the Spirit's got it. As long as you can go, God's got it. 1,750 feet, and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep enough to walk through. Here's what I'm going to say. This is the loneliest place you can be in the Spirit of God, but it is the most healthy place you can be in the Spirit of God. You don't talk. You're, you're praying. Listen, and can, can I be honest, online, in-house, you don't live in the swim. Can, can I, like There are seasons where you go back to waist deep. I'm not going to make it seem like perfect, like Tyler swims all day long. There are different, listen, you're always kind of bouncing. You're going back. You're going forth. You're going back. That's it. Listen, that's okay. As long as you're staying in the water. This is the place. It's the hardest to maintain, but it's the healthiest to be in. This is when every thought you have, you're praying all day. You're reading every single morning. You wake up, you're reading the word, worship. It's on your heart. It's on your mind. You're saying, thank you daily. This is a spirit-led life. Why? You have no control. The spirit has you. You don't have the spirit. And a lot of us, we go, I have the spirit because you hold him on Sunday mornings. And you don't allow him anywhere else. I'll sing my songs to you, but I'm putting Beyonce on right when I get in the car. The moment the Spirit has you is the moment you surrender literally every single aspect of your life. Your car, it's surrendered. Every single thing that happens in your car is surrendered. Your anger does not exist in the car. The Spirit does. In your marriage, the Spirit has you. In your relationships with your person that you're living with and nobody knows that you're living with, that you're sleeping with, all of that... That doesn't exist in the deep end. You have no control. Absolutely no control. And the moment you get here is the moment people say one thing about you. You changed. Someone ever said that to you? You changed. You changed up. I didn't change up. I grew up. But when you surround yourself with people that are unfamiliar with growth, they think growth is change. They're just not familiar with what growth is. Baby birds, when one begins to fly, they don't go, he changed up. He left the nest. He changed up. No. They look at him and go, I'm trying to get there. But when you surround yourself with people that are unfamiliar with growth, they think you changed. You didn't change. You grew. And don't allow people that don't know what growth is to keep you from chasing what growth is. Don't do it. Don't do it. I've heard it. Listen, my whole life, I've heard it. You, can you imagine? Some people watch online. They grew up with me. They know. I switched up. Yeah, I switched up. I was dying over there. I was going to hell over there. I was depressed over there. I was anxious over there. I was broke over there. Yeah, I switched up. You're tripping. And you're crazy for not switching up. I'm not crazy for switching up. You're crazy for not switching up. Y'all stop. But why do, listen, why do we seek the deep end? Why? Well, it says it at the end. It says it at the end. What does it say? Verse 6. He asked me, have you been watching? Have you been watching what, what's been happening around you? As you began to walk, have you been watching the people around you? The faces around you, the opportunities around you? A lot of times we can be so busy looking at the water that we never look around us and go, there's more that's happening than just me being in water. Have you been watching? Son of man, then he led me back along the riverbank. When I returned, I 
was surprised by the growth. I was surprised by the sight of many trees. When you focus on your depth, everything else takes care of itself on the shallow end. When you focus here, everything else works itself out. Watch this. I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The water of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. It will revive. The Spirit of God will revive the dead things, revive the dead marriage, revive the dead uh, calling, revive the dead dreaming. It revives you. We think when some, we look at death as a, in a, in, as a human. When something's dead, we move on. God doesn't know what dead is. He knows what sleeping is. What did he say about Lazarus? No, Lazarus isn't dead, he's what? Sleeping. Revive something in me. Wake something up in me, Spirit of God. Wake it up. Marriage isn't over. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert of, into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of the stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea for its waters will become fresh. Look at why do I go to the deep end? Life will flourish. Tyler's life will flourish when I'm in the deep end. When I'm committed to reading the word, when I'm committed to praying every single day, when I'm committed to fasting, when I'm committed to worshiping, life, blessing will flourish out of me. But here's what happens. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Somebody online, somebody in house, hear me. You'll leave the deep end to go heal something in the shallow end and not allow God to heal what's on the shallow end, what's on the surface. Too many of us, we leave the depth we leave, we leave the deep so that we can go heal something so that we can get back to the deep. My marriage, listen, my marriage is struggling. Let me get out of this. Let me focus on it for a minute. You left the presence of God. What did you think was really gonna heal it? Hey, my friends are struggling. I'm gonna stop going to church so I can reach them. That's dangerous. If only this guy, if only this girl, if, if they would get saved, they'd be the perfect marriage material. So I'll leave and I'll try to evangelize real quick. You're leaving living water to go to dead things. You will get hurt every single time. You'll die every single time. Every single time. And I know, listen, and some of us, like, that's something like our heart, we want to heal. We want to make new. A lot of us, we have some stuff in the past that we don't even know that we deal with. And so it's like, I, I can fix it. Let the water fix it. Just swim in the water. Let the water fix it. Let the Spirit of God fix it. You don't have to. You never have to give up your spirit to rescue somebody else's. Single people, you never have to give over your body so that some person will read the Bible. You never have to, you never have to give up and hand over your morals so somebody will hold your hand. Jesus did the sacrificing for their soul. You don't have to. His body was given over. Yours doesn't have to. But we will get caught up trying to rescue people with our bodies. We pray for their souls, but I'm not attaching my body to your body because God gave his body up for you so that you could be saved. But too many of us, we're being destroyed because we're giving over our bodies, we're giving over our minds, we're giving over our hearts to save somebody when Jesus did that in the first place on the cross. You're leave, listen, you're leaving living waters to go rescue dead things. Listen, we pray for that. Hey, if you're over there, somebody close to y'all, hey, y'all help that, I can't leave. I'm swimming in the goodness of God. You're gonna talk about me, that's cool. I'm swimming. I was swimming, you better stop, what? I'm floating, what are you talking about? Oh, huh, what'd you say? <laughs> I couldn't hear you. Water's deep over here. Can't hear you. But that's what the enemy will do. 
He can't keep the water from you. He can't keep the access to the water from you. So he will use people in different levels of the water to get you out of the water. And you have to know when somebody's there. You have to have the discernment we've been talking about. You have to. When I first got saved, I started working like at a church. I was an intern. I was doing, I was cleaning the toilets. I was going to like the, the supermarket to get candy for the youth group, all that. And I had come out of what my, the, how I grew up, all the mistakes I made, all the partying, all the clubbing. I came from all that. And I just said, I'm going to the church and only going to the church. I'm not going nowhere else. I'm not looking to nobody. I'm not talking to nobody. I'm not doing nothing. I am for G. I was sold out. And one day I checked Twitter. And a dude that I grew up with, he tweeted and he, he, he added me. Okay, he tagged me. He was serious. It wasn't no like a casually like I... No, he, 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 he put my name in it. I got the notification. He said, I don't know why at Tyler Sturbin's trying to be a Christian. That's the fakest dude I've ever met in my life. And I'll never forget. I was at my house and I read that. I was probably been saved for like four months, five months. And I read that, bro. I was so mad. I'm trying to do the best I can over here. Am I messing up? Yes. And I felt like in my spirit to click the like button. So I did. I, I agreed with him. I clicked like. I am a messed up Christian. I am a fake Christian half the time. I try, I'm trying. And I'll never forget, I kept serving at the church. I kept showing up. I kept worshiping. I stayed. I stayed on my grind. I was doing what God called me to do. Like six months later, he calls me. He forgot that he had tweeted that. I didn't. Listen, I didn't. I almost mute. I, boy, I, was, I was heated. He said, hey, Mom's got cancer. I didn't really know who to call. Will you come over to the crib and, and pray for my mom? And I wanted to say, no! But, but I really had to wrestle with, this is, why I, this is why I committed to here. So I went over to their house, and he, he dazzed me up. Hey, man, thank you, dude. Bro, I was telling my mom, you've been in church. Like, you've been, bro, we're proud of you. I said, thank you. And his mom, bawling. She said, I've never had someone pray for me. Do I do anything? Do I? And I said, no, nah, I haven't really done this either. I've only been saved for like eight months. I said, but we'll give this a shot. And I, I just put my hand on her. On, we went to like a Pentecostal church. It was like my, her head and her, and her shoulder. And, and I just began to pray healing. And I remember I left there and God spoke to me. He said, if you would have left to be with him eight months ago, you wouldn't have been able to do what you just did today. You wouldn't have had the opportunity to do what you did today. And many times when the enemy knows, the, God had already planned me to pray for his mom eight months later. Listen, he, that was already in the works. And Satan goes, I'm going to try to stop this six months from now so that he doesn't do that there so it doesn't give hope there. And many of us will leave what God's called us to do because people are questioning what God called us to do. I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm here to answer the call God has on my life. And somebody in-house online, I have no idea. You're trying to swim. We've had a ton of new people online and even in-house. You're trying to do everything God's called you to do. And it feels like nobody around you is pushing you there. Or every time I get around these so-called Christians, they're, they're worse than the people at the club were. Don't stop. Don't stop. I'm going deeper. You don't want to read? Sorry. You don't want to pray? Sorry. You want to go out? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. You're the one asking me. I didn't ask you. Because you know there's life there. There's life for your mental health. There's life for your emotional health. There's life for your financial health. There's life for your marriage in the deep end, in the deep end. But you'll, listen, you're attached. We're attached to so much, aren't we? And that's the thing that keeps pulling you back up. Those websites, the bottles, the gossip, the person that's not your husband, the person that's not your wife, is pulling you back up. You don't, just because you have a passion to go deep doesn't mean you're prepared to go deep. 
when a scuba diver knows he's gonna go deep, he makes sure he has enough oxygen for the trip. There's planning. There's planning. I know this person's not gonna go there. I know this person's scared. I'm not going, listen, if you wanna go, I'm not going. I don't mess with this stuff in the water. I'm done. I'm in the living water. I don't do the real water. I don't do that. Nah, there are like sharks and stuff, man. In the lake, yeah, there's probably sharks in there too. But you'll, listen, you'll get so hurt. You'll get so mad that everyone's like, your goal isn't to bring them. Your goal is to get there. Married people in-house online, your goal is not to get them there. Your goal is to be there and allow for them, allow for the spirit of God to talk to them. You do not have to go back. Okay, I'm done. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. God, I pray that somebody in here, in-house, online, that they're ready to go deep if that costs everything. If that costs everything. <sighs> Holy Spirit, I've lived too much time in the shallow end. I've spent too much time in the shallow end, and I've gotten mad when I've gotten shallow results, when I've attracted shallow people when I've had a shallow mindset. I've worried about every single bill that crosses my table. The deep end doesn't worry about that. Lord, I just wanna walk in your, in your healing, in your life, in your blessing. The, the, this word, I trust what this word says. I believe that it's real. I believe that it's true. I believe that it's trustworthy. So I'm going to walk into my, the healing that you have for me, the blessing that you have for me. And I'm putting, listen, I'm putting down the floats. I may not know how to swim well. You'll figure that out. I'm just dropping the floats. I'm just dropping the thing that I'm holding on to. Because you have more for me. You have more for me. Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. It's your name we pray and everybody said, amen. I can't act like everybody cause I'm different I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different I can't please everybody cause I'm different I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent I can't try to look like you, I just ain't got the time I don't wanna move like you, I walk a different line Yeah, they keep pulling me, yeah, they keep pushing me Yeah, they keep pulling me and that's why I can't act like everybody cause I'm different I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different I can't please everybody cause I'm different I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent I can't act like everybody cause I'm different I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different I can't please everybody cause I'm different I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent